Okay. So let's rock and roll here. So we're doing potpourri today, so Shufang, any thoughts? Michelle's wife was late. Michelle was late. Got her to be canceled. So papillodermis is a little pale. Um, is your corneum normal? Or is it more basket weave normal above and then compact below? Which would make you think of? So it's kind of a this week sign, but it's also that layered corneum, a clue to look for little bitty circles like that one. Oh. Tiny little white circle. Um, which is tinea. So layered horn, always look in that compact lower horn for the possibility of tinea. Okay. Very good. Let's clean that up a little bit. The ulceration, almost like a, um, sweeps like picture, but I want to see what this is. Yep. So, I mean, maybe it would fit like a sweets picture of one of some of the history. Okay. So, thinking of a, a sweets like histology, maybe how happy or unhappy is your epidermis? It's dead. It's definitely dead. Have you commonly seen it dead in sweets? I don't know if it's like a. Lump of like that leukemia associated it can be kind of desperate. That, that's true, especially in leukemia. So necrosis in Swedes would make you think leukemia. So um, cell type. Um, some are large and typical. I mean, there's like uh, reniform, like and some of them. But So mix of newts and eos, and you can get eos in Swedes, but they're fair number of them here. Um, let's see, we got another one here. Um, if we, let's see, I'm trying to get in, see another way to get towards what's going on. Um, what else do you know that recruits neutrophils <laughs> besides Swedes? General categories. Um, Pos often goes with like infectious. Like infectious. Mm. Anything else about the cells? Margination, so we have multinucleation, molding, margination. So what is this? Uh, what's herpes of some sort. Herpes of some sort, which one tends to necrose and have lots of neutrophils, so probably zoster. So, so <laughs> sneaky, <laughs> sneaky, you know, largely necrotic, sneaky, but um, right off to the edge, we had the diagnostic features. Um. Hopefully that's not on the test. <laughs> <laughs> um. It's pretty compact corneum. Your horn. It's compact. 
Uniform or alternating? Alternating. And so alternating horn you can see in a variety of things, right? Yes. So what kind of things can give you an alternating horn like that? Well, if there is an NK, it could... So it could just be actinic keratosis, and this mm -hmm. ju could just be like an oid AK, right? Mm -hmm. Where you tend to spare from your adnexal epithelium, you tend to spare the corneum, giving you a flag sign. Mm -hmm. um, if it were a kid with alternating... Like an ilvin. Yeah, like an ilvin. You do kind of lose your perikeratosis in some areas. Um, so those are, are reasonable thoughts going into it. Um, Benign lichenoid keratosis can have more of a mixed corneum than other lichenoid things. So that's all a uh, um, reasonable differential. Let's see if we can see what that says. I got what that says? Something like papule, antigenous papule or something. I don't know. Um, you know, it, it, to me it looks probably the best fit being uh, a lichenoid AK with a flag sign. Anacidic proliferation. Um, looks like the nests go out further than the dermal, I say melanoma. Does it end in a nest? It does. Nests are kind of unequal. How about on this side, does it end in a nest? Well, or, or I'm not sure on this side. So it's kind of undecided. One side, it's fairly well circumscribed. One side it ends in a nest, the other side not so clear. So the next question, are the, is the lesion itself all nested or are there areas where discrete nesting is difficult to make out? The second one. And is it largely or exclusively tips and sides or their involvement of the arches? Involvement of the arches. And what's your arch enemy? Melanoma. Melanoma is your arch enemy. So also areas where it's more nested in the dermis than at the junction, kind of an inverse of what you would normally see. Um, so a little bit sneaky. But there is some degree of asymmetry of both the inflammatory infiltrate of the nesting pattern, great big nest on that side, hard to make out a nest on the other side. Um, putting that together with the areas of confluence and arch involvement, probably no one. So equal skin. Looks like probably melanocytic proliferation here as well. Well, at least there's some atypical looking cells at the junction. looks like a not so well-defined melanocytic proliferation. Um, hard to make out pigment in the corneum, so you, you can't really tell if it's a ridge or furrow pattern. But uh, I can say is it's highly dendritic. Right? And you know that's somewhat suspect. So large hyperchromatic angulated cells, highly dendritic cells, some cells crawling into the arch, all you know, make making this a little more suspect. There's something that looks like a nest, and yet there's a weird kind of cone-like dendrite. So the whole thing looks almost like a tadpole. You know, that's a little odd. Okay. And so those would. 
make it a little suspicious and turned out to be yeah you want to know what the size of the lesion itself was and that was a piece of something quite large apparently and was acrylantigenous melanoma Got a brush over here. So, lymphoid. Okay, that's good. Let's look at the information. Mm. Trying to look in the corneum. Is that like a little scabies? That is a little scabies. <laughs> and you get for Jeopardy, you get extra points for freezing it in the form of a question. <laughs> Passing or playing? Oh, oh that's what. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Chelsea, you're passing. I'm passing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One day. <laughs> okay, so I can see it, but I think it's an interface dermatitis. So agree with interface dermatitis, and okay. is your basal layer intact or largely destroyed? Largely destroyed. So what type of interface would you put it in? Lichenoid usually. Lichenoid interface and then is your corneum uniform or does your corneum vary from side it to side? It varies some areas, the best so degree, some areas compact. Yeah, so what type of lichenoid dermatitis has the variable corneum overlying in? Yeah, BOKs are much more <laughs> likely to have a varying corneum. And then you have to check with the history to see if it's compatible, but a mixed up corneum is a nice clue to benign lichenoid keratosis. Pretty dense infiltrate. And then soft tissue. So it's a soft tissue type of tumor or proliferation. Mm. And what kind of pattern do you have here? Well done. Someone needs to pass the easy button. So what I heard was perivascular whorls of that was easy. round cells. Um, like the pericytes to those vessels, so a myoparasitoma. You are truly bionic. <laughs> 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 Which, um, back in the, what, 80s in the U.S. was a big compliment, right? Because of the show, The Bionic Man. <laughs> so. A punch biopsy. There's some inflammation deep. The and the yeah. yeah, and the shape of the vessel, pretty round. Um, hard to make out the muscularis very well, but what we can see of it looks like it's a continuous wreath rather than bundled at right angles. Um, so probably an artery and probably TAN, PAN. So round you know, big muscular round vessel down in the fat, probably polyarteritis nervosa. Some keratin in there, a little crusty. And what kind of thing happening there? Um, is that EDP? Or hyper, hypergranulosis. Okay. And hypergranulosis is kind of right in the smack in the center of this thing, not at the periphery. So like keratoacanthoma. So this is, you know, you're cut at the edge so you don't see the crater opening to the surface. But whereas squames, conventional squames, only have the hypergranulosis off to the sides, um, keratoacanthomas tend to have it throughout the lesion and right in the heart of the lesion. Got a little shave. Had some serum crust at one edge. What about a pour for a second? I don't think so. Got a pour for a second. Anything else? Uh, 
Is that a, there's something in the horn there. There is something in the horn. Is that a right kind of there. Pigtail, like a and that scabies. is definitely a popped egg of uh, <laughs> scabies. <laughs> Very good. Remember what you will miss clinically in your career is tinea, 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 and scabies. Granuloma, kind of interstitial, but palisaded around something slightly bluish in the dermis. Granulomanulari. And it's focal and patchy as opposed to um, NLD, which is top to bottom, side to side. KS or angiosauric. So KS or angiosauric, which of those has visible atypia typically? Angiosarcoma. So KS can give you a similar vascular pattern in the dermis with crack-like spaces, tends to be centered around pre-existing ethnexal structures and vessels, whereas angiosarc doesn't particularly care where there were pre-existing structures. Um, KS has very little atypia. Angiosarc is the one, conventional angiosarc is the one with our atypia. Nuclear atypia. So, kind of looks maybe like a stellate abscess forming in the dermis. Stellate abscess. Do you see pus in the middle, or do you see no. um, pink collagen and then amphiphilic bluish stuff? Pink collagen, amphiphilic bluish stuff. Maybe like a, like granuloma annulari. Like granuloma So it's a palisading granuloma like you would see in a stellate abscess, but the pus in the middle is missing. And instead what you have is degenerating collagen with amphiphilic mucin. And GA, again, tends to be focal patchy, whereas NLD is solid top to bottom, side to side. Air under the cover slip, so I think we're gonna skip that one. Let's do this instead. Right, so some compact cornea. Yep. So compact horn. So there's something a little abnormal about it. Just it's not the corneum fell off, or looks like super papillary thinning. So it looks like this may be a little super papillary thinning. There's yeah. also definite spongiosis here, right? Um, so in a broad bucket, you want to put it in itis or oma. Itis. Yeah, so this is inflammatory rather than neoplastic, so itis rather than oma. Um, you know, with a little bit of parakeratosis, there's not a lot of acanthosis, um, but maybe into a subacute spongiotic dermatitis bucket. And if it's inflammatory and you don't know what it is, what should you always consider and put in the differential? Tinea. Tinea, yes. which is what this turned out to be. Mm -hmm. So even subacute dermatitis is a, you know, leads you to a differential once you've ruled out tinea. What you will miss most in your career clinically is tinea, 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 and scabies. Over it makes me think of DF. Yeah, so a little bit mixoid DF. So the acanthosis is a huge clue, right? You have a proliferation in the dermis, 
that produces acanthosis rather than effacement. So the three things that tend to do that, spitz nevi, this is not, doesn't look like a spitz, um, a granular cell tumor, doesn't look like a GCT, and then DF, and that has the biggest spectrum of appearance. Very good. Get, hit the easy button. You see lymph. That rather, was easy. Lymph rather than heme. You can have focal heme in a lymphangioma. When you see them, they look like clear frog spawn, and then one or two are, you know, black, purple, or red because um, they hemorrhage. Um, but there's definite lymph in here and vessels up in the papillary dermis. So, lymphangioma. Acrocordin. Oh, acrocordin. Um, acrocordin's a thought. Do you normally have all these tiny little adnexal structures in an acrocordin? Lots and lots of tiny little hairs. All intact. Accessory. Yep. Tragus. Accessory tragus. That's absolutely right. So the main difference between an acrocordin and an accessory tragus are all of the tiny little adnexal structures in the sorry. In the accessory tragus. Very good. Well done. <laughs> so easy once you've seen it once before, right? But makes you now, when you see that pattern, makes you want to hunt for the focal molding, multinucleation. Um, you know, looks maybe a little like sweets, but not as edematous. There's a little too much necrosis for sweets, and so you're starting to look for something infectious to include herpetic change. <coughs> Broad shave, proliferation, pretty asymmetric. Pretty asymmetrical. Melanoma. So, for all of the reasons you said, and this does not particularly disperse in the dermis, so that's a vertical growth phase to the melanoma. Looks a little spitzy. I'm not that excited about it being anything bad. In a spitz, the cells are large, right? They're mm -hmm. larger than keratinocyte nuclei. Are these large or are they small? They're smaller. Small. So, do you know any kind of heavily pigmented spitz like thing um, with composed of small spindle cells on the thighs of young women? <laughs> yeah, so pigmented, <laughs> pigmented spindle cell nevus. Um, many people regard it as a small cell variant of spitz that's dark and eruptive on the thighs of women. Um, if you want to throw Dr. <laughs> Dr. Reed a bone, and <laughs> you know, since he described it, and use the, the name that's called. Dense infiltrate. Dense infiltrate. It's like it's mixing throughout the So um, this is? Probably a halo nevus. Halo nevus from scan, right? And it's halo nevus from scan because you have black cells that are lymphocytes, you have gray cells that are melanocytes, and it mixes like a band throughout the entire lesion. It's invited in, it's friendly, they're all mixing together instead of being walled off at the periphery, which would be melanoma pattern. Do you ever stain? 
or what standard do you use to kind of differentiate? Just the typical payload, like, you, know, you have dispersion. Um, like you, um, so the, probably the best approach to a halo nevus is don't do the stains, don't look too close. You're going to you're going to scare yourself, right? It's a well-defined, well-circumscribed lesion. The lymphocytes mix in a band-like pattern throughout the lesion. It's a halo. I remember asking that question years ago at AFIP and you know, but what about the the little bit of atypia and pleomorphism and Dennis May's answer is that's why you don't look that close. Because <laughs> the pattern, it's a scan diagnosis. It's pattern. Yeah, Mermisha. Very good. You need the easy button. Um, that was easy. <laughs> it's acral lesion, it's endophytic, and you can see even at scan, not only the coilocytes, but also the big pink chunks. Mermisha. And a lot of these, you know, the exercise is you nail it at scan, or at least have your diagnosis pretty well nailed at scan, so you're only confirming at higher power. Um, well, I actually want to look a little closer on if those are atypical collapse in between the cells, or is this been a cell perforation? Okay, so question of, your question is could you have angiosarcoma or something with the clefting there? What's the epidermis opinion on that? it's a phased. So is it a phased or is it plate-like acanthosis, given that this is normal over there? I guess it's very thin, plate-like acanthosis. So plate-like acanthosis, but it's still, you know, if you took it to the bottom of that mm -hmm. 3D, it's about that thick, right? So it's an area with, or a person with skin that's a little bit thinner. Okay. Um, but when you compare it to the adjacent, you know, that plate-like acanthosis goes down about as deep as the reedy go. Mm -hmm. So that would suggest that it's a... I mean, it would, if we're just going based on that EF or... Uh, dermatofibroma, and then you'd think that the brown pigment is probably hemocytorin. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you can see hemocytorin in angiosarcoma also. So let's go a little higher. Any other clues to whether this is DF or not? Yes, um, Donuts. Lots of red <laughs> collagen donuts, right? So if you have siderophages, especially ringed lipidized siderophage, and you have red collagen donuts, you got a dermatofibroma. You are absolutely correct. Uh, follicular hematoma. sebaceous cystic hematoma. <laughs> so it is follicular and sebaceous and it's cystic. Um, sebacioma is blue with red ducts. This has a few you know, red looking ducts in them, um, but the whole thing is a almost EIC like structure with the follicular and sebaceous elements, so benign follicular sebaceous cystic hematoma. Very good. Large blue nodule. Yep. Uh, going down to the back. And the growth pattern. Almost looks like DFSP, but it's so okay. perfectly well-defined. So, definitely storiform. And then you look at the cytology. Are the woven mat-like fascicles, are they alternating skinny and dark and oval and gray? Pretty much, right? Mm -hmm. um, which is that disc-like nucleus of DFSP that's either viewed on FOSS or on side, making it look skinny and dark. And, you know, you want to know how far this goes. It certainly goes to the margins. 
and what probably happened is they biopsied a nodule, so it was probably a patch of DFSP with a nodule, and they biopsied the nodule. Right. So, dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans. So that's the question. Does it wrap around pre existing structures or is it not particularly wrapped around pre existing structures? It looks wrapped to me, I think. So if you're thinking wrapped, then you're thinking what? KS. Then you're thinking KS. And if you were to say, non-wrapped, kind of mimicking KS, but non-wrapped, or if you thought KS and looked at this and it were HHV8 negative. Angiosarcoma? So conventional angiosarc, or if it's a small discrete lesion composed of all those little microvenules. <laughs> so microvenular hemangioma is one of the simulants of Kaposi sarcoma. And one of the clues, you know, if you're not sure, you get an HHV8 and it would be negative. How does the diffuse dermal geomatosis differ? Um, the clinical, and it's also this, <coughs> you can draw a circle around the lesion in the dermis. It's, it's discrete. Whereas diffuse dermal angiomatosis really is top to bottom, side to side, ischemic, skin, adipo heavy adipose tissue, pendulous breasts, um, and is a response to ischemic change. Um, they just have to be watched for progression to angiosarc. Mm. First, I thought kind of wart like. That kind of wart like with hypergranulosis. What do you think about the nuclei and normal maturation? Um, yeah, not so much over there. Not so much there. Yeah, definitely pagetoid scatter in the yeah. epidermis. So Bowen's and Bowen's not uncommonly is HPV induced, right? You have a nice coarse basket weave corneum there like a wart. You have warty changes at scan. It's just wart gone bad. Right. So HPV induced Bowen's, which means it's probably a high risk HPV type. See discrete well, lumen, or are the erythrocytes just between the spindle cells? It's like erythrocytes between the spindle cells. Which makes and you think of Kaposi's nodular KS. So early, early patch KS, staghorn-like. They look like dilated lymphatics that are very staghorny. Occasional plasma cells. Clue to stain for HHV8. Patch. KS early looks like that. As it becomes later and becomes plaque KS, then it's patchy, busy, busy dermis around pre existing adnexal structures and vessels. And then as it becomes tumor stage NS or KS, it's a tumor composed of spindle cells with erythrocytes between the spindle cells, not an apparent vascular lumen. Large, let's reticulate its strands of <coughs> cells, uh, So it's 
So pink strands, blue buds, mm -hmm. ducks in the strands. Infundibular cystic, basically the carcinoma. So infundibular cystic radiates out like fingers. This is anastomosing. So this one is pinkus. Oh, that'd be so pink strands, blue buds, pinkus tumor, and infundibular cystic. Infundibular cystic radiates out from a central infundibulum-like structure, whereas pinkus tumor is a nodule with anastomosing strands. Canthosis, lots of staph colonies. All right, so something impetigenized. So and you see squamous eddies and lots of spindling of keratinocytes. Good for irritated seb. Mm -hmm. Very good. Hmm. Equipment a cantholytic process going on. A cantholytic process. Is there any atypia to the nuclei, like an acanthletic AK, or not really any atypia? It's pretty uniform. Yeah, not really any atypia. Is it just acanthletic, or is it dyskeratotic? Dyskeratotic as well. And so if you have a SEB-like lesion with acanthletic dyskeratosis, then you have a... Uh, warty dyskeratoma. Warty Ds are usually cup-shaped. And the one that's said like is nacanthalytic dyskeratoma. Um, yeah, they're both benign acanthalytic dyskeratotic lesions. So it's just architecture that's different. The one that's like a seb is acanthalytic dyskeratoma. And the warty D is more endophytic, like a dilated follicle or, um, or craterophore. Lots of lips in there. Um, so there might be some pigment as well. Them, some pigment. I'm not sure if that's just what else is going on. Is that some viral thing? Um, or just a poro? <laughs> do you see no. red dyskeratotic cells for poro? No, no, no. 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 Is that like uh, an HPV? Or anyone else thoughts? Or coprons and grains? Yeah, uh, so those are all grains, right? Sure. So acanthalytic dyskeratosis, little focal process. So just like a, um, yeah. So Grover's or this patient actually had Did red and white streaks in uh, the nails uh, and the real deal. Was the real deal, yes. yes. Carrier would have considered it the real deal. What kind of hair? Um, telogen. So, telogen, or are there still dead reds in it? Do you see pycnotic nuclei? Yeah. So then, what is it? Cadogen. What's this one? Gadget. What's that one? Gadget. So what's your differential? Syphilis, AA, trichotillum. And what's in the fibrous tract? Pigment cells in Salpeteria. Or? Trichotill. Does, or does trichotill give you pigment in the tracts? Not as much. AA. So AA or <laughs> what's a dead ringer for Syphilis. AA? Syphilis. So you're down to alopecia areata or syphilis. Well done. Spindle cell neoplasm. And what are these big 
things with wreath, nuclei, and then lipid and hemosiderin. So ringed, lipidized, siderophages, pathognomonic for dermatofibroma. Right? So again, DF, big spectrum. This one at scan, you could maybe talk yourself into a little bit of a storiform pattern. But the ringed, lipidized siderophages really help you, and there is collagen trapping at the periphery. So big dermatofibroma. So BFDF, you are correct. I'm not sure if the um, if it's an alopecia biopsy or if there's some necrosis of the sebaceous <coughs> gland. Okay, so if there were necrosis of sebaceous <coughs> gland, what would you think? Um, zoster. Zoster. Um, but in this case, I don't think they're really necrotic. I do see some lymphs there, and I see some pigment here. So, alopecia areata or syphilis. So you have miniaturization of hair follicles, and you have lymphs in fibrous tract remnant, and you have pigment in fibrous tract remnant. Good. Well done. <laughs> Polyong needs it the is. easy button. That was easy. So you have a cystic like space with fibrinous, undulating synovial like lining, so metaplastic synovial cyst, usually the result of trauma. What are these things that turn into little flakes? Is that little like fungal element? Well, or just keratin. Right, all those little flakes are keratin flakes. And then what's around this keratin? And it's like a ruptured cyst. Does that look like a happy normal cyst lining? Yeah, the cells aren't round, they're kind of, they have flattened off parts, they're pointy, they're angulated, so the nuclear envelope is thick and, you know, very strange and irregular. Um, so there's pleomorphism, atypia, so takes off from a hair follicle, but it's a cystic squamous cell carcinoma, cystic squamous. Shave, making you think. Melanoma in situ. Melanoma in situ. Tell me about your dermis. Scarred. Looks scarred. What are these little collections of black things around vessels? Lymphocytes. Lymphocytes. So we could think of like a um, recurrent mucus or. Desmoplastic with the nodules of lymphocytes. So, with the little nodular aggregates of lymphs around vessels, you wonder if that dermis is desmoplastic melanoma. Um, so, if that's a scar, then yes, it could be recurrent nevus. If that's not scar, then and it then it's desmoplastic melanoma, which is what this is. Like 
Looks like granular manulari, focal, patchy, palisaded around altered collagen, and there's at least, there's some fibrin in there and some mucin in there. Coming quite deep. Um, you, if it is fibrin, you may absolutely call it deep GA. But it's superficial. <laughs> um, yes, which is <laughs> why in that case, so what do you call superficial deep GA? You call it pseudorheumatoid nodule. Okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the irony of superficial deep GA, right? So it has fibrin, looks like a rheumatoid nodule. It's not deep, they're not always deep, so then pseudorheumatoid nodule. Nesting here, this I would call melanoma. So, ends in a nest. Ends in a nest on the one side. Does it end on the nest in another side? No. And um, the nests vary in size and shape. There are areas that are poorly nested, and yet there's a melanocytic proliferation extends into the arches for melanoma. Deep infiltrate in the dermis. Deep infiltrate. Like spindly cells. Spindly cells, what's between the spindle cells? Necrotic ground collagen. So what is the bright red stuff? Collagen. Or heme, red blood cells. So KS. So it looks sort of like nodular KS. Tell me about the skinny, deep red collagen. How old is this patient? Young patient. Young patient. So this is kid skin with lots of fibroblasts and deeply red, tiny little collagen bundles. So what looks like KS in baby skin? Mm -hmm. And uh, digital hematosis. Or KHE, postform hemangendothelioma. So this was a kid with consumption coagulopathy, Kasselbach Merritt syndrome, <coughs> and a Kaposa form looks kind of like Capri sarcoma, spindle cells, erythrocytes between the spindle cells, no apparent lumen, but it's in kid skin. So you think of KHE. Adult myofibroma. Your answer was a little bit slow. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> okay. The only thing you forgot to say was. Don't waste my time. Don't waste my time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Adult myofibroma. Don't waste my time. <laughs> exactly. So you have pale bluish nodules surrounded by hypercellularity. And that's probably the greatest compliment you can get at this session is to be able to say, don't waste my time, right? <laughs> so adult myofibroma, don't waste my time because it's those hypocellular amphiphilic bluish nodules surrounded by the vascular cellularity, sometimes with staghorn-like um, hemangioparasitoma-like spaces. This one doesn't particularly have staghorn spaces. But it has the nice blue amphiphilic nodules followed by, surrounded by the hypercellular areas. Adult myofibroma, multi-nodular lesion. <coughs> hypercellular busy dermis. Hypercellular busy dermis. So is it spindled? Uh, it doesn't look particularly spindled. So it definitely does not have a grunt zone, but not particularly I spindle. Some, I see some ringed. Some ringed, lipidized histi Do you see hemosiderin? No. So okay. not like a DF. So what would this thing be that is sheets of epithelioid cells and at the periphery forming ringed, lipidized cells? So JXG. JXG, and what if the patient's not J? And XG. Then it's just XG. Mm -hmm. right. So it's anthogranuloma. <coughs> so sheets of histiocytes, and then at the periphery, at the edges, meaning top, bottom sides, 
it starts to form the wreath cells and then they lipidize and become two-ton giant cells and when they're very large what do you call them? Two-ton. Two-ton giant cells. The worse the pun is the better I like it. Okay. Lots of blood. Lots of blood. Um, what is, is that smudgy collagen? Like, I don't know if that's dead or if that's collagen. Pretty much dead, right? Um, dead, reactive, fibrotic. Kind of cystic fat necrosis there. Mm -hmm. You know, big ones and little ones, necrotic fat. So lots and lots of, you know, death and reactive change. Hemosiderin, and then we're looking for a clue, and about the only clue we have is see those one or two little flakes in there? Mm -hmm. Little gray flakes? What is this whole thing? I can hardly see the flakes, so. I mean, is it something to do with the vasculature, some pathology in the vasculature? Yeah, or, I mean, the flakes are probably keratin. Mm -hmm. right? Like a cyst. Yeah, like this is all where there was a ruptured cyst and you're just seeing all the fat necrosis and fibrosis and everything. So those little flakes are a clue to the diagnosis of the cyst, of the pre-existing cyst. All right. Looks like all compact horn. Compact horn and within the horn, what are those? There's like columns of pigmented. Columns of perikeratosis, and is it all flat or is some no, of it round? Round. So it's like a cutaneous horn with HPV. Mm. Yeah, so like a cutaneous horn with wart Mermisha. change, and it's Mermisha. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay. That box. This one. So highly vascular skin with lots and lots of little bundles of smooth muscle, so we're probably where? Breast. Breast tends to have big bundles of smooth muscle. This is maybe anogenital type skin where you have you know, the little smooth muscle bundles and lots of vascularity. And then what's on this anogenital skin? Have an epidermis, have kind of a posicellular zone, and then a sparse lymphoid band down below. <coughs> lichen sclerosis. <coughs> so lichen sclerosis, you can have effacement, you can have a little bit of interface, a little pigment incontinence, the smudged papillary dermis, and then always you have to have a lymphoid band. Morphia, radiation dermatitis, do not have the lymphoid band. LSNA always has to have at least a sparse lymphoid band. Nevis. Nevis. Anything else you want to say beyond Nevis? <laughs> Scabies in a nevis. Hypertrophic scar plus all of this bubble gummy collagen makes it keloid. So that's keloid collagen. Keloid. So hypertrophic scar, but you add that bubblegum collagen and it's a keloid.
Um, I don't know if it's melanocytic or it's a tiny bit paisley tie. Yeah, it's kind of paisley tie. I actually, well, it's kind of a version of a paisley tie I wore today. And um, <laughs> so the the nucle or the cytoplasm, is it normal or is it clear? It's kind of clear. So you're thinking like a clear cell syringoma. Clear cell syringoma. So you want to check the patient for diabetes, diabetes which is not all of them, but it is you know, more than. <coughs> than chance alone, certainly. Kind of a compact strong corneum. Thinning of the epidermis. Some edema. So dilated lymphatics. It's like edema. Yeah, so back. there's, it's definitely edematous. Right, and then what kind of cells? Lymphocytes. Lymphocytes. Like PMLE. Like polymorphous light. Well done. And if there were acral skin with a similar appearance? Perniosis. Then perniosis. Very good. Mm -hmm. And a cystic structure in the derm is a lot of the inflammation around it. The cystic structure in the dermis, lots of inflammation. Lots of what kind of cells? A lot of histiocytes. Are they histiocytes? What are they? Plasma cells. Plasma cells. Sheets and sheets of plasma cells might be a clue to the area. Of a ruptured cyst at first. Yeah, a ruptured cyst, but lots of plasma cells, and there are lots of these things, and they're so not just cysts, but kind of horizontally oriented, like a sinus tract. Yeah, mm -hmm. hydrodynitis. Mm -hmm. <coughs> We've got two more. Yes, from recanthosis. What are all of these pale cells up here? Mm -hmm. Toker cells? Well, toker cells are, um, are pale but tend to have a large gray nucleus. This has a small, almost pycnotic black nucleus. So, um, so if it's it, you know towards the upper third, you can see that in early nutritional deficiency because before it becomes sheet like, or just pagetoid dyskeratosis, which is nothing, right? Meaningless. You don't want to overinterpret that as pagetoid scatter of cells. You can see how at scan looks a little bit like buckshot scatter of pale cells in the epidermis, which is why you thought toker cells like clear cell papulosis, but those are distinctly gray nuclei. These are little black, almost pycnotic nuclei. So pagetoid dyskeratosis, benign. Fibroma, you have acanthosis, you have collagen yeah. trapping, and then you have a big spectrum of other changes, but you have clues that tell you what it is. And with that, we are done. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you.